We are finally back with some championship football. Thank God that the international break is now over. And for us, we've got no more international breaks until March of 2019. So thank goodness for that, guys. It feels like ages since I last did the video, so apologies for that. But we are back with some championship score predictions. And coming up this weekend, the championship is really getting back into full swing. We've got the second City Derby coming up this weekend. We've got some massive games at both the top and bottom of the championship, which I'm very interested to see what you guys are predicting. So as always, in the description down below, I'll leave all this weekend fixtures so that you guys can easily go ahead and make your score predictions and then if you do successfully manage to get any of them correct your comment will be included into the next video and if you do go in to enjoy the video make sure you leave a like it is always massively appreciated as well as that make sure you subscribe for some regular championship content but without further ado guys let's go ahead and hop in to my score predictions and so starting out with the game going on tonight in the championship between Ipswich Town and West Brom a really interesting encounter this one to get things going and so obviously with Ipswich still sat bottom of the championship there have been many positive signs under Paul Lambert so far, despite them still being bottom. They've drawn two games so far. Their last game against Reading, drawing 2-2 with them away from home. I actually thought it was a good performance from Ipswich in that game. Going forward, they were posing a lot more attacking threats, creating a lot more chances and getting a lot of different options going forward. Going up against West Brom, though, after the last international break, West Brom were having a bit of a disaster, really. They were on a really torrid run of form. The goals seemed to have dried up going forward. But then the last game before the international break, we really saw West Brom get back to their best with a fantastic 4-1 demolishing of Leeds United at home and so this one could be a really interesting game I feel like there's a lot more positivity around Ipswich at the moment West Brom went off on a high note before the last international break so it's going to be a close game in my opinion I don't feel like West Brom are going to have it all their own way and we've already seen so far this season a couple of defensive lapses in concentration from this West Brom defence I do think that with Ipswich playing with a bit more swagger going forward they could cause that West Brom side some problems there and for this one I'm actually going to back Ipswich for their third successive draw in the championship under Paul Lambert I'm going to say this one will finish as a 1-1 one, one draw. West Brom certainly have the quality to get all three points from this one, but Ipswich have been quite resilient lately, so I'll say 1-1. One, one. FIFA's going to say 2-0 West Brom. And then for the early kickoff on Saturday, we see Rotherham going up against Sheffield United. The home side Rotherham find themselves on a decent run of form in the championship currently. They've drawn four out of their last five championship matches, and it wouldn't surprise me to see this game go down a similar route to that, actually. If you look at Sheffield United's form in the championship recently, they are only three points off the top of the championship, but it has been a little bit stuttering. They've only picked up one win in their last five championship matches. Obviously their last game was incredibly frustrating during 0-0 against Sheffield Wednesday. In that game they had 19 shots but nothing was hitting the back of the net and I feel like this game could be sort of a similar sort of frustrating game you know with the way that Rotherham like to play sitting in quite deep and then hitting teams on the counter attack or from some set pieces. It could be a tricky afternoon for Sheffield United but I will just back Sheffield United to get back to winning ways and I feel like I come to regret it every time I do back Rotherham to lose because they always pull some out of the bag but I will say 2-1 Sheffield United. FIFA is going to say 1-0 Rotherham I'm interested to see which way that one goes. And then next up we see Hull City going up against Nottingham Forest. Currently at the bottom of the championship, it is incredibly close at the moment. And despite Hull being on a decent run of form lately in the championship, they still find themselves in the bottom three. Their last game is a very dramatic 3-3 draw against Birmingham City. Before that, they picked up two back-to-back -back wins in the championship. And so I feel like they've got a bit of something to bring into this game. They've started to score more goals now. Fraser Campbell going forward has been on a decent run of form for them lately. He's been a good poacher inside the box and they've got the added threat out wide of Grosicki and Bowen who have been chipping in with goals as well. Going up against Nottingham Forest who so far this season are still the side who has drawn the most championship games. They've actually been on a decent run of form themselves lately in the championship. Just sat outside the playoffs at this point in time. Their last game in the championship finishing as a nil-nil draw. We have seen a couple instances with Forest where they probably should have scored more goals than they actually got in the game. That could probably be said for that Stoke game. I thought that Jack Butland had a terrific game against them for that one who denied them on multiple occasions but for Forest they've got players going forward who are on a decent run of form at this point in time. Lewis Graben especially been bagging in the goals for them but I don't feel like there's going to be all too much in this one. I'm going to back it to finish as a 1-1 draw and FIFA's going to agree with me. And then we've got Leeds United going up against Bristol City at the top of the championship currently it is also very tight and so I just love the championship this season. We've really got no indication of who's going to be going up and who's going to be going down at this point in time. No one's run away with it so far which I really do like but Leeds obviously in their last game had one to forget against West Brom losing 4-1 away from home. Defensively, that's probably as bad as we've seen Leeds so far this season, with Bailey Peacock Farrell dropping a couple of clangers in that game. They got a good opportunity, though, to get back to winning ways against the Bristol City side, who have lost their last three games in the Championship. With Bristol City, they're a really funny side to predict, because you never really know when they're going to just go and turn their form around. But when Bristol City do manage to put together a couple of wins, they really can be a force in the Championship, but at this point in time, they are on a bit of a downward spiral. Their last game in the Championship, losing one at home to my team, Preston North End. I thought they were looking quite poor in that one, actually. Going forward, they didn't offer a lot, and some of the 
the combinations going forward for Bristol City. Earlier on in the season, they were looking like a real promising attacking threat. Lately, that's sort of gone out of their game a little bit. I'd like to see them put more pressure on this Leeds back line like we saw West Brom doing a couple of weeks ago. But with this Bristol City side and how they're playing with not much confidence at the moment, I'm not sure if we're going to get that from them. So for this game, I am going to fancy Leeds to get back to winning ways with a 2-1 home victory. Whereas FIFA's going to say, it'll be 2-1 Bristol City. And then a massive game at the bottom of the championship this weekend taking place between Millwall and Bolton Wanderers. Both clubs currently sat on 16 points and this is, I mean, this is a six point of this early on in the season. It really is. Bolton probably on the worst from the form in the championship at this point in time. They've lost their last four games now. What has been Bolton's main problem so far this season really has been the lack of goals. They've only scored 11 so far this season. The worst goal scoring record in the championship so far. Going up against this Millwall side who have been a little bit topsy-turvy so far this season. The game they had before the international break was probably one of the most bonkers championship matches we have seen in a long time. Losing 4-3 against Norwich City. They thought they had all three points going into the 90th minute, but that was flipped on its head come the full-time whistle. So for this game, I don't feel like there's going to be all too many goals scored in it really with Bolton matches so far this season. That's never really been the case. Phil Parkinson, his job is coming under increasing pressure. You know, he's going to need to turn this around sooner rather than later. I'm going to say that this one is going to end as a 1-0 home victory for Millwall. Uh, that's on a knife edge really. That is a massive game for Bolton. They could turn around their form, but I'm just not sure if I see it. So I'll say 1-0 Millwall. FIFA is also going to agree with me. And we see my team Fresno then going up against Blackburn Rovers in a Lancashire derby. And this really does have all the potential to be a really good game of football. Preston currently unbeaten in our last seven games. Blackburn on the verge of the playoffs. Only two points outside of them at this point in time. It really could be a good game. I think there will be quite a lot of attacking football on show for this one. I don't feel like it's going to be too much of a cagey game between these two sides. I think both clubs are going to want to go for three points in this one. And that should lead up to a good game. Coming into this game, Preston that have the best injury news really with both Johnny Maguire and Daniel Johnson picking up injuries during the international break. Really is bad news for us. You know, Maguire so far this season, he was just coming back from a hamstring injury. A positive we can take into this game, though, is that defensively we have been looking a lot more stable than we were earlier on in the season. Going up against this Blackburn side, we're going to need to be stable defensively because they've got a lot of options going forward who I fear could hurt us. They've got pace going out wide with players like Adam Armstrong and Ben Brereton. Danny Graham going forward is always going to be a threat. And of course, Bradley Dack in midfield is their main man pulling the strings for them. It's going to be a really interesting battle between Bradley Dack and Ben Pearson. That's what I'm really looking forward to seeing for this match. But uh, I do feel like there will be quite a few goals scored. I'm going to predict this one to finish as a 2-2 draw. I really hope we don't lose this one, really. I'm sure Blackburn fans will feel the same. But I'll say 2-2. FIFA's going to say it'll be a 1-1. And then next up, we see Sheffield Wednesday going up against Derby County. A really tricky one to predict, in my opinion, just after an international break. Obviously, before the Steel City Derby, Sheffield Wednesday were on an awful run of form in the Championship, considering a bunch of goals and they weren't really scoring many either. But that game against Sheffield United maybe has a bit of a resurgence in their season, you know. We saw them defensively being a lot more stable, albeit going forward they weren't really offering a lot for that game. I thought that Dawson had a very good game and the back five all sat in very well. Whether they can keep that defensive stability going forward this season, it's yet to be seen. The match is still under a lot of pressure in my opinion and the results do need to turn around sooner rather than later. Going up against this Derby side who they themselves weren't coming off the back of the best result just before the international break, losing 3-0 at home against Aston Villa. Before that they were on a fantastic run of form in the championship as well. A lot of their players going forward playing with a lot of confidence but defensively for that game, they had a bit of a nightmare. So it's a tricky one to predict this one. I'm going to fancy it to finish as a 1-1 draw. I think that if Derby are in full flow for this one, they get back into the swing of things. They probably will walk away with all three points, but I don't feel like there'll be all too much in between them. I'll say it finishes a 1-1 draw. Beavy's going to say it'll be 2-0 Derby. Then next up, we see Stoke going up against QPR. Quite a tricky game to predict this one, in my opinion. You know, We've seen Stoke recently drawing quite a few games in the championship. They've drawn three out of their last four championship matches. And with a lot of games involving Stoke in the past couple of months in the championship, they have been fairly low scoring. They've not been considering too many goals, but scoring goals has been a, bit, a little bit of an issue for them. Under Gary Rowett, they've tended to set up a lot more defensively in the recent weeks to go ahead and sort out the defence, which was looking all over the place earlier on in the season. A lot has to be attributed to Jack Butland, who has been in some fantastic form for Stoke City recently, but going up against QPR is not going to be easy. They've won four out of their last five championship matches, currently are only two points off the playoffs, and so they're going to be coming into this one with a lot of confidence. In their last game, they beat Brentford by three goals to one. In that game, they had a 10-minute spell where they really went ahead and blew away Brentford going forward. I believe that Jeff Cameron won't be able to play for this game, though, for QPR as he is on loan from Stoke City. That's going to be a massive loss for QPR with how integral Jeff Cameron has been into that QPR midfield. But for this game, I don't see there being all too much in it. I'm going to back it to finish as a 1-1 draw with FIFA saying it'll be 2-0 QPR. And our next game, see Swansea going up against Norwich City. This has the potential to be a cracker of a game going on this weekend. Two sides who have played some brilliant football so far this season. Norwich currently sat top of the championship. They've won their last five championship games, scored eight goals in their last two games as well. Norwich really are coming into this one with a lot of momentum, but going up against the Swansea side, who 
have caused some sides quite a few problems so far this season. They're currently just sat outside the playoffs. I feel like this game will tell us quite a bit about Swansea actually going into this season. So far, the games which Swansea have struggled with have sort of been playing teams in the lower half of the table. Again, some of the big boys so far this season, we've actually seen Swansea put in some good performances. And so for this game, I really do think Swansea could give Norwich a run for their money. Both sides are going to be looking to get on the ball for this one, looking to control the flow of the game. And so for that reason, it's going to be a really interesting tactical battle. And I feel like there'll be a lot of good football on show for this one. But I am just going to back Norwich for a 2-1 away victory. They've just been too good recently. They've got that never-say-die attitude about them. The build-up play through midfield has been absolutely fantastic. And Tumi Puki, I mean, he's just been on fire at the moment. So I'm going to say 2-1 Norwich. Thief is going to say 2-0 Swansea. That'll be a good game this weekend. And then we see Wigan going up against Reading. Quite an interesting game, this one. If Reading go ahead and claim all three points from this game, they'll only be one point behind Wigan, which is quite interesting, really, considering how well Wigan were doing at the start of the season. They have had a bit of a drop-off in the Championship recently they've lost their last four games although if you do look at the teams they play lately they have had quite a hard fixture running and so a home game against Reading is a good chance for them to go ahead and bounce back and get back to winning ways however it's not exactly going to be an easy game Reading lately have been scoring quite a few goals in the championship Yaku Mate, their main man going forward has been scoring some absolutely massive clutch goals for Reading so I wouldn't put it past him to score a couple more in this game here today I feel like it'll be a really good open game of football defensively so far this season I think it's fair to say that Reading haven't been brilliant but they do always cause a threat with pace out wide and a good finish in the middle like Yaku Meite, anything can happen for this one. Both sides are going to be posing an attacking threat for this one and so for that reason I see quite a few goals being scored and I'll back it to finish as a 2-2 draw with FIFA saying it'll be 1-0 Reading. And then for the evening kickoff on Saturday we see Brentford going up against Middlesbrough. Brentford currently only won one of their last 10 championship matches. They've been tumbling down the championship. A couple of weeks ago we saw them pick up a 2-0 home victory. We thought that that might get them on the spring ball back to success but that's not been the case. We then saw them go ahead away at QPR lose by 3 goals to one in what was quite a poor defensive performance from them once again if you do put that Brentford defense under a little bit of pressure we have seen them crack so far this season already considering 23 goals going up against this Middlesbrough side who haven't had those sorts of problems defensively they've been very sound so far this season they are now unbeaten in their last five championship games albeit three of those games have been draws they have been drawing quite a few games so far this season however they are sat second in the championship for a reason they're a well-drilled machine under Tony Pulis this season and even you know we saw Jordan Hugo score a couple goals in their last game Maybe he can be their talisman going forward. You know, we've seen a couple of their strikers be quite inconsistent so far with the likes of Asun Belonga and Gestead when they have been given their chances. Not really done anything to warrant getting into the team. However, if Hugo can go ahead and stamp down his authority into that starting eleven, we may see Middlesbrough posing more of an attacking threat going forward this season if the service is right for him. So for this game, I've got to be back in Middlesbrough with the form that Brentford are currently on. With the players they have got going forward, you know, you do feel as if they can go ahead and outscore any team. But just by how bad Brentford have been defensively in the past few weeks. I'm going to say that this one will finish as a 2 and away victory for Middlesbrough. Whereas FIFA is saying this one will be a 2 0 Middlesbrough win. And then our final game to predict this weekend, we've got the second City Derby going on on Sunday between Aston Villa and Birmingham. And this one really is set up to be a cracker of a match this weekend in the Championship. Both of them are currently sat on the same amount of points in the Championship, both on 24. Aston Villa sat in 11th place and Birmingham sat in 12th. I'm really excited to see this one because honestly, it's on a knife edge. It could go either way. Aston Villa do have a bit a little bit of injury news coming into this one though. When I'm recording this video, both James Chester and John McGinn are doubts for the game. Whether they'll make it back in time or not, obviously, like I said, I can't say when I'm recording this video. If Chester especially is out for this game, defensively, I do worry for Villa. The lack of depth they have in that position, you know, who are they going to draft in there? Are they going to play someone like Yedinak back at centre-back, who I, I'm not, I don't think is very comfortable there? It's going to be interesting to see because Birmingham, obviously, in their last game, scoring three goals in the Championship. Che Adams and Djukovic linking up fantastically well so far this season. Obviously, Che Adams scoring a hat-trick in his last game in the Championship. He will cause absolute mayhem if Yedinak is playing at centre-back there. So, Birmingham really do have a dynamic to stretch this game with the pace going in behind. Obviously, Aston Villa, though, we do need to touch on them. Under Dean Smith, with their past couple of games, they have been looking absolutely fantastic. Their last game, especially, against Derby County, was a phenomenal performance from Aston Villa away from home. Creating a load of chance in that game. The second half, especially, they absolutely blew Derby out of the water with the attacking play going forward, getting the ball out wide, and then getting the ball into the middle for players like Tammy Abraham who's been looking sharp for them going forward lately. It's going to be an interesting game with the injury news that Villa have got coming into this game that it just does put a little bit of doubt in my mind. And so for a prediction, I'm going to back this one to finish as a 1-1 draw. I really do think it's going to be a close game for this one. We saw the Steel City derby a couple weeks ago. That ended as a 0-0 draw. I'm hoping that this one will see a few more goals scored, but I'll say it'll finish as a 1-1 draw. Thief is going to say it's going to be 2 on Villa. I'm really interested to get your guys' score predictions for that one. But guys, there you have it. There are all the championship games which are taking place this weekend so as 
as always, let me know down below whether you agree with my score predictions or not, and how do you think your club is going to get on this weekend. But apart from that, guys, I will now wrap it up for this video. So if you have enjoyed, make sure you do leave a like. It is always massively appreciated. As well as that, make sure you do check out all the other links in the description down below, and make sure you do subscribe for some regular championship content. Like I said, thank God we are now back with some championship football, and the international breaks are over and done with for the time being. So thank you very much for watching this video, guys. But apart from that, I'll see you all in the next one.